Hey folks, Jeff here from Dead Drift Consulting. Um, I wanted to do a video here uh, about something a little bit different, non-hunting, non-fishing related, non-shooting related, um, but another one of my passions, which is snow skiing. Uh, I've been skiing my entire life, like 40 something years with some breaks, obviously in between, like everyone has because life happens and we move on and do other things. Uh, but it's kind of, surged for me in the last maybe eight or ten years and I've made some equipment changes some different some some choices on newer equipment and and trying out some new things and today I wanted to talk to you about uh, ski boots so um, I've been a Scarpa Pro for maybe close to eight or ten years now my closet is full of Scarpa shoes everything from uh, dedicated rock climbing shoes to typical hiking boots, trail running shoes, approach shoes, uh, full-on stiff crampon compatible mountaineering boots, and then also ski boots for the last probably four or five seasons. Um, just to give you a little history, starting where, when I started skiing, this was 1980-something, which I know is quite a while ago for for a lot of folks, but not really that long ago, um, especially from my perspective <laughs> at 55. Uh, but I started out, you know, in the era of long skinny skis, very stiff skis, plastic boots for sure. But, you know, the front runners were people like uh, Lang, Nordica, Solomon came into the mix. Um, and I've skied all, all three of those brands, particularly the Lang XLT and the Solomon SX91, which is the really old school stuff. But, you know, overlap boot shell design has not changed dramatically. It's not like it's a brand new piece of technology. Um, just materials and quality of worksmanship and precision and anatomy and all those things have worked in our favor as skiers to just produce products now that are clearly superior to what what I started on um, even though guys back then were still winning World Cup and Olympic races I mean it's just a typical evolution of any sport right so anyhow uh, about four or five seasons ago I bought my first pair of Scarpa boots which is the Freedom RS um, Super bright. I love the colors. I like the Italian workmanship. I like the Italian flair of Italian shoes uh, or boots in this case, you know, so very bright colors um, and it just appeals to, to whatever my sense of style, I guess. This is a 130 flex boot, which is about as stiff as you're going to get in typical retail or recreational ski boots. Uh, this has a standard Alpine sole. It came with the other sole. It's not grip walk. It's the neck, the one in between hard plastic um, Alpine soles and like the new grip walk sole. But even the Alpine sole has rubber inserts at the toe, under the ball of the foot, um, on the instep, and then a little bit into the heel here. Uh, these boots were really, really something new for me. Um, because of the the walk mode lever so that little lever right there i hope this is focusing um, when it's in walk mode it disengages the upper cuff from the the lower shell of the boot and then you engage that when you ski push it down give it a little flex and that little aluminum bar fits into a basically a a, a little stop there to keep it from flexing freely on this joint. So in this mode, the upper cuff will flex freely on this joint simu simulating an, uh, an ankle, uh, ankle joint. So that allows the boot to move back and forth and makes it easier to easier to, uh, to walk in. Huge fan of that feature in any ski boot anymore. I, I don't know why, I mean, unless it's a race boot where you don't need this, um, I don't know why you wouldn't incorporate a mechanism like this into ski boots anymore just because it's so handy 
comfortable and quite frankly it's safer because it allows your ankle to flex and it allows you to walk more naturally as opposed to the uh, clunk clunk of normal ski boots when the upper the upper part of the shell or the cuff are, are locked so <clears throat> these ski boots were really good um very narrow last i don't remember what the last numbers are on this particular boot but i think they were somewhere around 100 uh, millimeters give or take uh, a little bit now because of that and because of the shape of my I have very skinny feet narrow feet anyways bony feet but i do have this six toe sort of condition which is that you know that bony protrusion on the first joint on the outside edge of your foot behind your 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 pinky toe so in order to to accommodate that on both of these boots but more more specifically on the left boot uh, they had to punch the shell right in this area um, and do some custom molding to the shell itself as well as you know heat molding the liners like most boots come with anymore <coughs> and then this also included a custom orthotic that fit down in there to position my foot correctly um, so <clears throat> this boot is probably four or five years old it's still in really good condition and it actually still does fit very well but it is on the tighter side and it does give me quite a bit of foot pain um, on that six toe area still and then the outside knife edge of the foot um, and then the shell fits just tighter along the top which I have to be really picky about these two bottom like the tension on these two bottom buckles in order to maintain circulation to my toes and keep my feet from going cold and getting very achy at the end of the day so last year I, I did these had these these boot fitting modifications done about three seasons ago um, last year I decided it's time to look at a different ski boot just because um, I didn't want to continue to fight with those those painful conditions and fatigue throughout the day so this year um, I stayed with Scarpa and I bought the four quattro XT this is their latest boot that just came out this this season um, <clears throat> it is a very similar design in that it's an overlap shell design here uh, still has the moldable heat moldable intuition liner which looks like that right um, super very actually very comfortable a very comfortable liner for a for a stock liner in a ski boot there are some very expensive aftermarket custom liners that you can purchase um, but if the factory one works, then I, I say ski it until it doesn't and then replace it when you need to. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, it still has the, the walk mode mechanism, although it's been redesigned a little bit from the Freedom RS to the 4 Quattro XT, uh, but it still operates on the same principle. You pull up on this lever, which disengages this, uh, um, whatever you want to call it, clasp or hook disengages that from the lower shell and allows the whole boot to flex uh, flex through this through this hinge right here um, engaging it has been just as easy as as with the freedom rs i feel like the freedom rs is a little bit easier or more positive or confidence inspiring when engaging that on on this one i have i've had to flex my foot back and forth uh, multiple times especially in the right boot to get this this bail to engage but otherwise no big deal um, it still has the compatibility with typical alpine ski bindings which are downhill bindings which is what I, I do um, but it also has the the pin binding attachments or a pin binding points at the at the toe and the heel and if if you're touring with these and and using them in that way big change though is the grip lock sole <clears throat> or one of the big changes the grip lock sole looks, looks like a, a hiking boot on the bottom with an AFD pad up here in the front and, and a smaller one in the center of the heel uh, these are compatible with downhill only grip walk compatible bindings they have to be grip walk compatible they can't be the MNC or the ISO whatever whatever 96 something uh, they have to be specifically grip walk compatible bindings. so if you're buying boots with a grip lock sole ensure that the bindings that you have are grip lock compatible or you have to buy new bindings which is what i had to do on two out of the three pairs of skis i have um, <clears throat> so but totally worth it because 
this is a much more comfortable platform to, to walk on. There's some rocker here from the ball of the foot forward that allows your foot to kind of roll a little bit on the step off. And then just from a security and safety standpoint, these grip the ground much better, I guess, hence the name grip walk. But these are much more comfortable and confident, inspire, confidence inspiring to walk across parking lots, um, uh, hike, to, hike to ski, um, uh, terraces or, or, or what do you call it? Grates, uh, whatever, scrambling over rocks and stuff like that to get to where you want to get to. This inspires so much more confidence because of the grip and because of the cushion of the rubber. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of the grip walk stuff now. I don't understand why anymore. Well, whatever, well, that's not my decision. So here's the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about with this boot specifically is the fit. The last width is the same or within maybe two or three millimeters of what the Freedom RS was at 100 millimeters. But, and the Flex is still a 130 Flex boot, so it's still pretty stiff. But the fit feels entirely different to me. And I know this is, this is super, this is completely subjective because I've read other reviewers, for instance, on Blister, um, stating that, like the fit is super low volume and it was very, very tight and it, it hurt here and it was whatever there. And I have found these boots to be out of the box, the best fitting pair of boots I've ever owned. Um, yes, they were snug. Um, yes, they still took heat molding the liner in order to get the, to dial in the fit, at least to the point where I'm at now, which could probably still use some very minor tweaks. But surprisingly, it was easy, it was simple, and it was it's, they're extremely comfortable to wear all day long, which is unusual for me. Um, <clears throat> the toe box in particular seems to be wider. Uh, yeah, I mentioned on the Freedom RS boot here, they had to punch, punch the shell right in this, in the six toe area in order to make room for my foot so that I wouldn't be in constant pain. I have not had to do that with these. Um, and I don't know that I actually will need to do that with these. It might just be a little more tweaking and molding of the liner itself in order to make it something that just disappears. Whereas right now, as long as I'm skiing, it's never a problem. It's when I'm sitting, standing, walking around for extended periods of time and your foot naturally moves a little bit forward in the, in the boot, um, <clears throat> that's when I start getting noticeable, noticeable pain in that left foot, uh, six toe area. Now, uh, the buckles are easily adjustable and can account for, or you can change, obviously, the pressure on the top of your foot, which is kind of critical because that's where the veins that feed your toes run. Um, so easily adjustable for, for tension there. And up here, of course, uh, this third buckle from the bottom or second from the top is, is the most important buckle on the entire boot because this is what keeps your heel in place or at least helps to and if there is a downside to this boot when it comes to fit that's the thing that I uh, I may have to, to modify on the liner of my boot is the heel pocket or something that allows the the heel pocket of the liner to better hold my heel now again entirely subjective maybe my narrow ass heel my chicken ankles um, need more volume in or need lower volume in the shell or in the in the liner in order to really hold my heel the way I expect it to uh, but that's been the case for me so I may put some L pads or J pads or whatever on the liner itself in order to increase the tension or the grip of uh, of my heel within the heel pocket of this liner <clears throat> um, so the other big thing about this, and this was surprising and actually led to me having to spend twice as much as what I, I expected. The big thing here is I wear a, a size 27.5 boot, all right? So I ordered the 27.5s in this boot. That is this shell right here. Uh, I noticed a lot of foot movement and sloppiness and gaps and whatever else in the boot while I, while I was skiing uh, on it the first two or three times. And, and for the record, right now I have about 10 days on these boots uh, this season. 
including uh, uh, half of that at least. No, I've got more than 10 days, but I've probably got four or five days in these boots working, uh, training for the ski patrol up here at Sunrise in Arizona. So it's been used for work as well as recreational purposes. Um, but I noticed some slop and some movement, some gaps in there where, you know, my foot was not as precise as I wanted it to be or I needed it to be on steeper, steeper slopes and whatever else. Uh, the Freedom RS was much more precise. The whole thing fit as a tighter package um, in the same size boot. This is a 27 and a half also. So in the same boot, um, I started looking at shell sizes. So I pulled the liner out and I shell fit these. And if you're not sure what shell fitting is, it's when you pull the liner out with just the shell of the boot, you put your foot in there with the sock you're going to wear, push your toes all the way to the front of the, of the toe of the boot so they're just kissing the inside of the, the toe and then you see how much of a gap you have behind, behind your heel, between your heel and the, and the actual inside of the shell itself. Um, this actually tends to be one of the, a kind of a critical step in properly fitting ski boots. But when I did that with this, with this 27 and a half, uh, four quattro XT, and then compared that against the shell fit I got out of the Freedom RS, the difference was significant. So I looked at the, I looked at the boots themselves and I want to say all, but I don't know because I haven't looked at all boots, but all ski boots have printed on them the sole length. The length of the sole of the boot is printed onto, onto the plastic. So that sole length is from here to here. It's just, the, just a, a measurement from end to end of the shell itself. Um, the 27 and a half Freedom RS measures at 297 millimeters in a size 27 and a half. The 4 Quattro XT in the same size 27 and a half uh, the shell length is 308 millimeters. So that's a difference of what? 11, 11 millimeters? Um, that's kind of significant. And when I shelf it, these, you can see it. It's like plainly obvious. It's not just like, oh, this is a hair bigger than that one is. No, it was like significantly bigger by, by you know, maybe instead of a finger and a half width back there, maybe I'm getting two and a half or three fingers, but it's, it's quite a bit. Uh, so what I wound up doing, my solution to this, was not to buy a, a, a bigger, higher volume liner. It was to buy another pair of the same boot um, in a size 27. Now Scarpa splits their sizes on the half. So in a, what that means is the size 27 shell is the same shell size for a size 26 and a half and a 27 foot. Uh, foot size. The 27 and a half boot <clears throat> has a shell that fits from 27 and a half to 28. So your si you're going up an entire shell size for maybe a half size difference in your actual foot or the size that you wear. So I bought the 27 size uh, boot, which its shell size, or I mean, sorry, excuse me, its sole length is 299 millimeters. So that is obviously far closer to what I was wearing because I like the way these fit. They're just painful. Um, this shell size is much closer to the Freedom RS in the same, uh, in a half size smaller than this size is. This is sounding confusing to me as I'm saying it, so I hope this is making sense. Um, both, both boots in a size 27 and a half are 11 millimeters difference. The size 27 4 Quattro XT is only two millimeters longer in the sole length than the half size larger boot from the Freedom RS. So this matches the fit more closely for what I was feeling out of the Freedom RS, and so that's what I did. Now I took the 27 and a half sized liner out of the out of the first pair of boots and put them in the half size smaller boot. Um, and now the fit is as dialed in as I can imagine uh, without going to a professional boot fitter. Uh, so it took 
spending twice what I needed to in order to size them right. But therein lies the reason for this actual video is because I want people to understand this and know this before they buy it. <coughs> Unfortunately, Scarpa is not a typical brand you see at a lot, at most ski shops. I mean, I think there are probably some in wherever, more skier friendly states than freaking Arizona that may carry these boots so that you can try them on. But if you have the opportunity to do that and this is the boot that you have your eye on, then absolutely go down there and, and shelf fit these boots first and try to come up with the right combination. Now, the problem with that is if you find that the size 27 boot is what you need, but you normally wear a size 27 and a half, you cannot buy individual liners from Scarpa and mix and match like I did, right? So now I have a size 27 liner that I've never used that came out of this boot shell. <clears throat> um, and I just set them aside and I've put the liner, the 27 and a half liner from this boot shell into the size 27 boot shell itself. And in order to do that, I had to buy two pairs of boots, which is mildly ridiculous. Um, now, the liners that come in them are very good. They're intuition liners. You can buy intuition liners separately um, on their own and put them into the boot. I've done, I did that with a pair of Langs uh, probably six or seven years ago, just before I bought these Freedom RS boots, I had a, a, a used pair of Lang Super Blasters, which was a hilarious name to me. But I was familiar with the Lang name and their brand, and, and I I've been very happy with Lang in the past. Uh, but I bought the Intuition Dreamliner as an aftermarket product to put in that boot, and that did help uh, at least fix some of the problems with that boot for, for my fit. <clears throat> so you can buy individual uh, Intuition liners, but for an Intuition liner, an aftermarket Intuition liner, you're probably looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of about $300. Uh, ZipFit also makes arguably better liners than Intuition, but really I think it's splitting hairs. But those liners are going to cost you, I mean the ones that I was looking at were $505 retail, which is almost the cost of the boot itself. So I don't know if I, if I saved or wasted a whole lot of money uh, going this route, but now I have two pairs of the same boot with different liners. Um, so anyhow, but the, the you know, the, the point of, of, of making this video is not only to say, first of all, I freaking love this boot. These are incredibly lightweight. They have great soles, uh, very comfortable to walk in, easy to fit, at least for my foot. Um, nice low profile buckles, very adjustable, great power strap um, <clears throat> with a little, kind of like a K-clip or J-hook sort of a deal here with a cam buckle on it so you can adjust that power strap. Uh, excellent walk mode mechanism. <clears throat> Makes it easy to walk around when I'm, when I'm, when I'm not on the skis. Uh, and then actually warmer than I expected. Uh, the boot itself has been a pleasure to be in. Have I, have I experienced cold toes in it? Absolutely I have. Uh, my wife and I just got home from six days at Park City or in the Park City area, one of which I spent at Alta, which was fantastic, a whole different subject all on its own. Um, uh, and yeah, my, my toes did get cold, but a experimenting with different socks as well as buckle tension solved that problem completely. Uh, <clears throat> I've been skiing both of these boots, the Freedom RS previously and the Four Quattro XT on a pair of 179 uh, Solomon X-Drive 88s, so they're 88 millimeters underfoot. Um, the Rosing Null Black Ops Sender, which is 106 underfoot at 186 centimeters. And then also the latest pair of skis, the DPS Lotus 117 at 185 centimeters. That's 117 millimeters underfoot. That's a pretty wide ski. But I've skied both of these boots on all three pairs of those skis, and they're, they're both of them, I, I can't ask really for anything more. I don't know. I mean, I don't have the ability to try every boot. <clears throat> um, but 
but I stick with the companies. I'm loyal to the companies that treat me well and have proven themselves uh, in one way or another. And as far as Scarpa is concerned, I wear their shoes every single day. I wear them at work. I wear them hunting. Um, any, any outdoor activity up to and including indoor, walking around the house, uh, I'm wearing freaking one pair or another of Scarpa footwear. So <clears throat> anyway, but the point of this was the shell, okay? The differences in shells, shell sizes or, or sole length, and then what you may need to do in order to accomplish the fit that you were looking for. This is the most important piece of ski equipment you own. So this is the one that, that uh, warrants the most attention, the most, the most money, um, and, the, and the, the, the most critical component of your search when it comes to um, ski equipment. I equate these almost to like the rifle scope on a rifle or the optics because those are the things you're, you're looking through the damn things far more than you're shooting the gun. Uh, at least from a hunting standpoint or a work standpoint. So uh, you don't you don't save money on the optics for a rifle. You don't save money on the boots when you go skiing. Save money on the skis, on the poles, on wear last year's clothing, whatever it takes. Um, nothing is going to affect your enjoyment of the day and your ability to ski well and improve quickly more than properly fitting ski boots. Uh, anyhow, that's about all. If you guys have any questions, please, please shoot me a, a, a message or an email or leave a comment or whatever. I don't, however you want to do it. <clears throat> um, but I think that these are a viable alternative, even for somebody who is not touring and not going into the back country, skinning up a hill as just a purely, uh, pure, purely downhill skier, a downhill alpine skier these work just fine and they've been very precise for me and have skied very well and i i could not i could not be happier with this boot plus the color is freaking badass man and i i just totally dig the style um <clears throat> anyhow thanks for thanks for tuning in and watching and let me know if you guys have any questions all right